All right, I'm going to be talking about probiotics, guys. I frequently get questions about probiotics, which types to take, how to take it, and I'm going to use this article that I just got in my inbox to um, defend the point that I'm about to make. There's a lot of hocus pocus out there about how to take probiotics. Do I take them with food? Do I take them without food? Do I take them standing on, standing on my head? How do I take my probiotics? I have always told people that you should take your probiotics just like you previously took your probiotics. We did not always have probiotics in capsules. I know that may surprise you, but our caveman ancestors did not exactly have supplement manufacturers making supplements and capsules and probiotics and capsules. We didn't always have yogurt and all those fancy things to have probiotics. So think back to how you would have originally eaten your probiotics, and that's how you should take your probiotics. So the, the way we got probiotics back in the day was we ate dirty food. We didn't bleach everything. We didn't put everything in containers that needed to stay good as long as possible. So it, it, it gets sterilized in the, in the factory so that by the time it gets to your house, it stays good for even longer. So most of our food that we eat these days has been mostly clean. So we don't get as many probiotics from our food. Previously, you would dig a carrot out of the ground and pull the carrot up and start eating the carrot. You might cook it and that might kill some of the probiotics, but we ate dirty food previously. Even if you took that dirty carrot out of the ground and washed the, the dirt off of it, there's still microscopic bacteria attached to it. So basically, we got many of our probiotics from the soil. And if you listen to anyone that talks about um, the health of your lawn and the health of your trees, they're actually gonna talk about the probiotics in the soil. It's the same probiotics in the soil that we have in our bowels, maybe specifically specific ones, but a lot of the same ones in the dirt or in our bowels. It's kind of weird to think about. But basically, I'm going to use this, um, use this article to prove my point because there's all kinds of marketing out there right now about probiotics. Um, spore biotics are the newest thing I've seen. Um, enteric coated. I wrote down some of the things. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, the with or without food, which I don't, it doesn't really matter to me as long as you, you eat your, uh, as long as you take your probiotics. So this study is about um, whether it was perfectly fine to do fecal transplant with an oral capsule or through colonoscopy. So let me back up a little bit. You may have heard of C. diff infections. It's one of the most cruel things that we get as humans. It's a, it's a bacteria that overgrows in our bowels when we take too many antibiotics, and then it makes this toxin called C. diff toxin, and it makes you basically um, poop your brains out for days on end. And so this study took people who had C. diff infections at least three times with an appropriate treatment and could not get rid of the C. diff. And so one of the ways to treat recurrent C. diff is with fecal transplantation. What that basically means is you're taking poop from a healthy person and putting it into your bowels in order to cure your condition. Yes, that is equally disgusting as you think it may be. So there's there, the main way we were doing this before, we not being me, uh, was done through colonoscopy. They would You would have to do a colon prep where you, you take all this laxative to clean your bowels out, and then they go in with a scope all the way through your large intestine, through the whole thing, which starts in your lower abdomen, goes all the way up, all the way across, and then all the way down to the other side. It's a pretty um, intense procedure if you've never had one. Luckily, you're put to sleep for it. So um, what they do is they go all the way to the beginning of the, the intestines, uh, large intestines, and then they stop at the cecum and they, they put in the, the fecal slurry, they call it the fecal slurry. Um, in the report, they use 360 milliliters of poop, someone else's poop, and put it in your colon, and then they track the progress to see how you did. They took another group of people and administered them poop capsules um, for 40 days. <laughs> that sounds disgusting. Yes, it was real poop in a capsule and you took the capsule every day. And for the study's purpose, someone watched you take the capsule to make sure you did it right. Can you imagine what those smell like? Hopefully they're covered pretty well. And so basically over the, the, the course, they, they, they watched these people. And overall, people did the same whether they did the, the poop capsules or whether they, did, whether they did the poop transfer by colonoscopy. So what that tells me is that probiotics, even from regular stool, not any kind of fancy microspore technology or anything like that, poop from regular capsules, or I'm sorry, probiotics from regular capsules can make it all the way down to your large intestine and still get where they need to. So you will hear people say things like, oh, the probiotics get killed by your stomach acid, that's why you can't take it with food. No, or partially true. Yes, the probiotics are killed by stomach acid, but you're taking billions of probiotics. Some of them are gonna make it down to the large intestine, and that's all you need. You need some of the billion, kind of like 1% of 100 billion is, well, still a lot of bacteria. So I usually tell people, keep it simple. Take your probiotics every day. 
I don't care if it's with or without food. Your body's gonna make stomach acid, it's gonna make enzymes, it's gonna try to kill some of those probiotics, but ultimately some of it will make it down to its destination. Now, there are people doing probiotic enemas and we do those in our office. That's a good way to bypass the whole digestive process and get it straight to the bowels. But this study proves that just regular oral probiotics work really well. One final part is what probiotics do I take? There are millions of them out there. I've, I've got a couple tips. One, find one that has multiple strains. I don't like just the one strains that, that cure all. That's just not true. Pick as, a probiotic with as many strains as you can find. Two, pick one that's high count. It needs to be at least 25 billion or somewhere around 25 billion per capsule. Be care of marketing. If it says three capsules is 25 billion, well, that's kind of a weaker version. So make sure it's got 25 billion. If you're not sure if it's a good quality, an easy trick is if you take a glass of milk and dump your probiotic into it, leave it out on the counter, it should turn into yogurt. As long as at least one of the strains is lactobacillus, that should tell you whether the probiotics in the capsule are actually viable or not. Or not. If it doesn't turn into milk, then it could be that either that that supplement is a poor quality or all the bacteria are dead. So it might, there might be those bacteria in there, but if they're dead, they don't do any benefit for you. If they're alive, they should convert the milk into yogurt. Um, you gotta leave it there for a few days and, and watch it. And if you've never made yogurt before, it might turn out pretty tasty. Let me know how it, how it works. Um, and so the specific strains to look for, I don't usually recommend too many specific strains, but in your multi-strain probiotic, you wanna look for lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and look for multiple versions of those strains. We haven't quite figured it all out in medicine. We've got a long ways to go. The third strain I would look for is something called Saccharomyces boulardii. That is a beneficial fungus that helps kill off bad bacteria and other fungi. And so we frequently use that in my practice. The two probiotics that we use almost all the time that work really well in combination, um, this is one of my super secrets, is Therabiotic Complete. It's from Clara Labs. It's a little blue bottle. It's got 25 billion colony forming units, and it's a combination of different lactobacillus and bifidobacterium um, probiotics. This is the one we use for our Saccharomyces. It's Ultraflora Spectrum by Metagenics. And it's got another 30 billion live organisms. So it's got the bifido and lactobacillus as well, different strains, but then it also has the Saccharomyces boulardii. So the, they both have lactobacillus and bifido, and that's important, but the main one in the ultraflora spectrum is the Saccharomyces boulardii. So the, the way I explain how probiotics work is we used to think that probiotics get into the bowels and they plant new seeds and you grow these new probiotics. But what we found is they, they exert kind of a calming effect as they go through the bowels. They decrease inflammation, they can help kill off bad bacteria, they kind of rebalance the microflora, and we don't really fully understand how all that works. The other thing they do, I like to say, is they kind of crowd out. This is a terrible metaphor, but I kind of like it. So if you're at a party and there's five people there, but three people you don't like, that's not really a fun party. So if you invite 25 billion of your friends, then it's a pretty good party because there's tons of good people and those three bad people don't matter so much. So that will be, that's what we call kind of a crowding out feature. So you may not have the healthiest microbiome right now. We're working on getting rid of gluten and dairy and decreasing inflammation. These probiotics crowd out the bad bacteria and make your immune system less reactive to those um, bad bacteria and fungi. That's the way it's thought to work, although we've got a lot to learn. So the basics of this video are, hi, is that you want a multi-strain probiotic you want lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and saccharomyces boulardii, and you want around 25 to 50 billion um, colonies per day, basically. And it doesn't matter whether you take it with, with or without food. That's all I have for today based on my study that I have of swallowing poop capsules. So hopefully you don't have C. diff and need to swallow poop capsules, but if you do, it works according to that study.